Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38, and this is what it says. And Jesus was going about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And seeing the multitude, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Pray with me. Jesus, give us those eyes that see and those ears that hear. Kingdom all around us. Kingdom you came to usher in. Breathe on us your spirit. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew begins the way that a gospel ought to begin. The word gospel means good news, and Matthew begins with the, the good news of the birth of Jesus. Just the way that, that good news ought to begin. But Matthew ties it to the Old Testament. That this isn't just something one day, you know, Jesus woke up and said, I think I'll be born human and I'll put on flesh like a suit of clothes. No, that this is a part of God's rescue plan all along. That it was the angel of the Lord that told Mary and Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus. And it's that name Jesus that means rescue. That Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. That God's rescue operation is, is, is Jesus ushering in a, a new kingdom is the word that Jesus uses for it again and again and again. The old kingdom was a kingdom of, of sin and death, shame, destruction, and fear. And now he's, he's, he's ushering in this new kingdom that's a new creation, that's new life. A life that, that's only given through the Spirit of God. And so... It's a life that gives eyes and, and ears, seeing and hearing that we can't get anywhere else. And, and Jesus is ushering it right into the middle of the old kingdom. So it's appropriate. It's appropriate that this morning when we read that Jesus was going to the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. That was Jesus' number one favorite sermon topic. He talked about that more than anything else. And this kingdom is a kingdom where God's will is done on earth and it's done in heaven. That this kingdom is ushered in when we take part in the will of God. When we take part in his rescue operation. When we take part in what God is doing. What his will is in the world around us here on earth and in heaven. Jesus is talking about this, and he doesn't just talk about it in his teaching. He shows them what it's like, and that's what it goes on to say here as well. He proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom, and he healed every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. It's God's will. 
It's God's will that, that brings in healing and wholeness. It's God's will that brings in restoration and recovery. But it goes on to say that he saw the multitude and he felt compassion for them. That he has the eyes that see compassion. Where others might just see just a, a big group of people. He has the eyes that, that see. He has the, and, and, and it feels, com, the heart that feels compassion because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. That's what it says, distressed and downcast. That, those two words must be a little difficult to translate because different Bibles translate it differently. Some translate it as they were harassed and helpless. Well, I guess that's what sheep are when they don't have a shepherd. They, they feel harassed by... I guess every predator that comes along helpless because they have no natural defenses. They're just a tasty meal for predators. Others translated as they fainted and scattered because sheep naturally, they just follow whatever's in front of their face and, and it may take them out of the richest pasture that there is and into a place where there's nothing to eat. It might take them right over the edge of a cliff. That sheep keep their eyes on what, and they get scattered. They get faint. They can't even get something to drink easily on their own. They're frightened by fast flowing water. So distressed, downcast, that, well, that would be the way that sheep without a shepherd, well, that's the way that sheep without a shepherd would appear. So Jesus has compassion for them. Sheep without a shepherd. It's the first time that image is used here in the Gospel of Matthew. And it's obvious. Jesus is reaching back to the, the Old Testament book that he reached back to more than any other book, that book of Psalms. And Psalms describes what, what life is like when we follow the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters and he restores my soul. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Following the good shepherd, following the good shepherd, he brings contentment. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That it's, it's those places of pasture, of, of abundance Following the good shepherd, that's where he leads. Following Jesus, the good shepherd, that he leads us beside the still waters. The sheep are, are naturally bad swimmers. And the, the fast flowing water, they are very fearful of. That Jesus, the good shepherd, is the one that was, restores, restores our soul the very depths of us. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. That Jesus, Jesus is the good shepherd. And he offers us contentment. Now the most natural thing in the world is, is not to follow a good shepherd. The most natural thing in the world is to follow our wants. And that's the way the, the 23rd Psalm starts. I shall not want because I follow the good shepherd. Well, it's the most natural thing to, to follow our wants. That's what sheep do. They put their head down and whatever it is in front of them, they, they follow it. And without a shepherd, they aren't looking for the shepherd. It's the shepherd that's looking for them. And without the shepherd, they go astray. They wind up in all kinds of trouble. But it's most natural to follow our wants. It's most natural to follow what we see. It's most natural to, to follow what, what we hear. A few years ago, the founder of Domino's Pizza, Thomas Monaghan, had a spiritual awakening. He realized he had been following his wants for too long. And being the founder of Domino's Pizza, he had quite a bit of money to follow his wants. And he began selling off his stuff is the way that he put it. He had three houses that were designed by Frank Lloyd Wright he sold off. He also owned the Detroit Tigers baseball team. 
and he sold it off. He knew there was no life in following his wants and he sold off 30 vintage cars. One of them was a Bugatti worth $13 million. And what he said was, none of these things I've bought, and I mean none of them, has ever really made me happy. Jesus came that you and I might have life, not our wants. And that life we might have abundantly. That we might have eyes and ears to, to look around and see that the pastor that he's put you and me, there's the riches of God scattered all around us. Did we see this life in a different way? Right now we're living in a world that says be afraid, be very afraid because look, look at the stock market, you gotta hold on, you gotta grab. Don't take part in anything that God's doing, just hold on and grab and get what you can. Be very afraid. You and I have been surrounded by a superabundance. And to follow our wants, to follow the getting and the grabbing and the fear, there's no life in it at all. Jesus, he's the good shepherd. And he's the one we come to worship. He's the one we come to follow. And what he offers is what follows us is contentment and it's offered to you today the 23rd Psalm says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures but it also says he leads me beside the still waters sheep won't drink from fast flowing water they're too fearful of it they know that their fleece will, will absorb the water they'll sink that hooves were never meant their hooves were never meant to swim with so it's the shepherd that has to lead them to the still waters, the places to get a drink, the places where they can, can know the nourishment, the nourishment of the water. But so, so often it is that the, we don't know peace because instead of following the shepherd, we have a tendency to follow, well, to try and follow peace read a story about some peacemakers and peace marchers in Los Angeles. About 12 of, 1,200 of them met for a peace march. Well, they were standing around trying to figure out who was going to lead the march, and pretty soon dick bickering began to, to come up, and half the group disbanded. Of the half that were left, they became polarized between those who were going to ride and those who were going to walk. That it couldn't, they, some felt that it couldn't be a, a a peace march if some were going to ride in vehicles. So they decided to have a vote on it. Well, then they couldn't agree on who was going to vote. They said, should children be able to vote? Some said yes, some said no. Well, they had a vote and the children were the ones that voted. And, and so there were others that said, well, this vote is invalid. And by the end of the day, here in the peace march, they refused <laughs> to talk to each other. Peace march. To follow peace, it's a very noble thing. It's a very good thing. It's a virtuous thing. But as good and noble and virtuous as it is, it's not the same as following Jesus. I'm going to misquote C.S. Lewis for a little minute here. C.S. Lewis said something like, and the reason I'm misquoting is I can't remember exactly the quote, is that Demons don't come from fallen rats and fleas. The demons come from fallen angels. It's whatever's highest, it's whatever's best, it's whatever's the most virtuous. Did we begin to follow whatever's highest, whatever's best that is not Jesus, that is not God, is what gets us into true evil. That even... Those who, who start off following the good shepherd sometimes get divided in the good things and figure out, well, well, maybe our job, rather than following the good shepherd, is to go out and shoot wolves. And we keep our eyes peeled for the wolves rather than for Jesus. Shooting wolves is not a bad thing. 
Going after evil. Well, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's just not what we were called to. We're called to follow. To follow Jesus. And when we don't, we're distressed and downcast. It's the nature of following anything but the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He offers us contentment. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside the still waters. He, he leads us into those places of peace. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. Sometimes I, I think folks don't know exactly, understand what, what, what's meant by he restores my soul. That he makes my, my soul New. Read a story, Reader's Digest. That's an old magazine, but one of my favorite old stories from that old magazine is a true story about a fellow who, who rented a car for a funeral. And he also rented the driver. And as the driver was driving him to the funeral, he, he leaned over to tap the driver on the shoulder. And the driver jumped, just about jumped out of his skin. And the man apologized, said, I, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. That's when the driver said, that's okay. He said, uh, it's just I usually drive the hearse. <laughs> there are a lot of surprises in this life. And I don't think it's a surprise that we've heard it again and again and again that Jesus died to forgive your sin and mine. I think the surprise comes when maybe for the first time we realize that he rose from the grave to live his life through you and through me. To give us eyes that we don't have, to give us ears that we don't have. The way that 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation that the old things passed away and new things have come, that he's restored our soul, that he's made it into a new creation, something that we could never do on our own and that we, we develop eyes and ears that see and hear the distressed and the downcast. And we respond and we respond. Years ago when I first came to, to Roswell, I was trying to get out a, a, an exercise routine where I could walk and run, very little run, a whole lot of walk. And one of the things that I discovered pretty quickly here in Roswell, there are hills. I don't mean little hills, I mean big hills. Everywhere there are hills. You may not realize that in a car, but whoa, well, there are hills everywhere. Started out walking one day and didn't get far from my house at all. There was a fellow sitting on the, the side of the road, sitting on the, the curb. And if ever I saw the definition of, of distressed and downcast, that's the way he looked. Well, I didn't know what to do. So I, I said, do you mind if I sit here? He didn't even look up. He said, Looked at the curb, he said, that's fine. I sat down there and I didn't know what to say. So I said, tough day? He said, yeah, it's been a really tough day. We were quiet for a while longer and then he said, what's your favorite Bible verse? <laughs> oh, that was a surprise. That was a surprise. I said, my favorite verse is that God so loved the world that he gave his son. God loves the world. He said, yeah, I like that one too. He said, but you know, sometimes it seems like people don't care. And then he began to talk. And then he began to talk that and these are my words, not his, that it seemed like just people didn't have eyes to see him. 
People didn't have ears to hear him. Those weren't his exact words. His words were more along the lines that just people just didn't seem to care. Didn't seem to notice. And so I gave him my name. And I wanted to know, is it all right if I give him yours? Church. Is it all right if I give him your name? As one who cares. As one who who follows Jesus. Did we come together and, and worship to to discover whose we are and together to lift up praise and worship of him. But that's not all we do. That we come together to follow him and to, to reach out into a world that, that needs to know who he is. A world that's distressed and downcast. But that's not all we do. That we are also follow him. Where two or more gather, we gather in his name to gain strength from his spirit, to build one another up, to encourage one another. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as we see the day drawing near. That we weren't made just to to follow our wants, to follow peace, and and to hope for our own restoration of soul. That we read it right here. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. You and I were made to be workers. 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 I gave him my name. Can I give him yours? This morning, it may be that you've been following your wants for a while. And you know that there's no life in it. And that Jesus gave you a nudge, a shake, a thump on the head this morning. And and you have ears that heard his voice. And know that, that your life needs to change from following your wants well to following him. Or maybe this morning that you've been following something that's good and noble. It might be peace. It may be another virtue. But it's not the same as following Jesus. And this morning, Jesus gave you a nudge. And you begin to hear and see in a different way. Or this morning, it may be that long ago you started following Jesus, but you never mentioned his name to anyone else. And then this morning, you want to ask for his strength. Strength that you might follow him into a world that needs to know who Jesus is. Well, I want to pray with you this morning. Let's pray. Jesus, your strength It's power we need and it's power we don't have on our own to reach out into a world, yes, that's distressed. Yes, to a world that's downcast. And yes, we need those around us to do just, to join together with with your spirit that we may follow you together and, and reach out to a world that needs to know who you are, needs to know that we do care. that we can give this world our name as those who care. Lord, there may be those this morning that for too long have been following their wants, thinking that there's life in it. This day, I ask for your strength, that we may hear your voice. and follow. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. 
Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that He made us in His image, and what the Bible tells us is that His image is an us, is an our, when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to Him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.